Hey there, welcome to Hacker Homily, Hiker Homily number 22 for the week of May 28th, 2018, 2020, 20, a lot of 20s in there. So there we go. Um, and this should be a fairly simple one because uh, uh, some things sprouted up recently on some of the online hiker communities that I wanted to kind of touch on to just kind of get out there. <clears throat> it's almost a pet peeve of mine, but it's a safety thing that it just appears that some somehow are, are a certain generation because I don't want to just say the younger generation because I've seen plenty of folks my age doing doing it too um, so it's not just a younger generation but uh, they they, they kind of treat certain technologies kind of stupidly I, I'm sorry I can't I have a, a hard time finding another word for it uh, but first off here we are week of uh, uh, May 28th and that means for me the Lost Coast hike it's going to be a, uh, a four day uh, backpack trip is only about uh, a, a, a little over a week away that's pretty cool um, and then within a few days of getting back from that uh, almost a week after getting back from that I'm going to be heading up to uh, uh, Sly Park, which is uh, a nice little uh, private campground <clears throat> um, around the lake up in uh, the, the Sierra foothills near Placerville. Uh, we'll be camping there over the Father's Day weekend, and then uh, within a couple of weeks of that, we'll be doing the Bear Lake backpacking trip, so a lot of rapid fire cool outdoor stuff coming up um, in the next uh, month or so there's going to be about three trips there uh, and I will be covering as much of, of all of that as I can and, and, and posting stuff here for, for fun but barring that we're dealing with weird California stuff I know the rest of the country is like oh, your weather's not weird we're still having rain and it's almost June yeah I know some of you are, are dealing with that and stuff like that here in California we're kind of having weirdness or at least northern california i know southern california you might get this but <clears throat> up here in northern california by now we're used to being full-on spring if not really moving towards summer here it's the end of may and stuff for example today it's going to be forecast anyway at about 97 degrees fahrenheit 97 so we're just under 100 degrees fahrenheit today tomorrow's forecast 78 so it's just bizarre. We're going to have a day of intense heat. And then we're going to drop 30 degrees in 24 hours. And then for like two or three days, it's going to be in the 70s for two or three days. And then the forecast, at least for now, is skyrocketing right back up into the 90s, just like that. So I don't know what, what's up with that. That's just kind of, kind of wild. <clears throat> but that's our, our little intro. The actual uh, topic I want to talk on, you know, briefly, just kind of put it out there. It's kind of a semi-rant, semi, hey, this is something to, be, to think about and be prepared about. Um, so uh, our hiker topic for this week is getting help when you're out there on the trail. Now, I've talked before about, um, you know, knowing first aid and you got to be prepared for that kind of thing and things. But um, whether you're out there on a day hike or on a, a long backpack trip or something like that, um, you should have the ability and the knowledge on how to properly get yourself some help if you happen to need help. And I'm talking about um, real help. You know, you, you have injured yourself or you realize you're in over your head in some way, um, how to get help. And let me tell you one way not to get help, not the best way to get help anyway, is to get on your phone and go to a social network site or group and ask for assistance that way. If you have cell signal that lets you get on things like Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or any of those social sites, if you have cell signal for that, then you have cell signal to call 911 and get real 
assistance. Um, what has brought this up is, is recently there's been a couple of groups. One particular backpacking group I am in, um, we had a young man literally just post on the group, can someone help me? I don't know if I'm going to make it. And then that's all he posted. And when people inquired more like, hey, wh what are you talking about? You're not going to make it. What's going on here? He posted a map from the Gut Hooks app. And for those of you who don't know what that is, that's an app that on the bigger trails, the big through hikes like the PCT, the Colorado Trail, Tahoe Rim Trail, all the bigger trails and stuff like that. You can download maps from this app and these little maps show you your route and they show you all the stops on the route. Where water should be, um, tent sites, all that kind of thing. And not only that, but it is updated by the users. And so as somebody is using gut hooks and they get to water site 123 on the PCT, whatever that may be, um, and it's dry, they can type in their water site dry. So you can look at this app as you're moving on the trail and realize, okay, I can't count on this water site, but this one supposedly is flowing awesome. I'm going to get to this one. So it helps you figure out where all these things are. It's a fantastic app. If you're going to do a lot of backpacking, especially long distance backpacking, I highly recommend it. Um, I'm not sponsored by them, not paid. I'm just telling you it's a good app. Very helpful to get that gut hooks app. Um, so anyway, this young person who was called for help finally posts the demo version of the map. He's in Southern California on the PCT in the desert section. He's only about 10 miles into the trail, which is still kind of out there in the middle of nowhere. Um, and talking about how he's low on water. And that's the only information really they gave. So people don't know what's going on with this person and things. So long story short, finally somebody who lives in the local area passes that information on to the local search and rescue team. The search and rescue team um, goes out and takes a look. They use a helicopter, which right there means, you know, there, there's always an inherent risk in flying, but that's a lot of money to get a helicopter up into the air to look for this person. They find this person on the trail. Apparently they knew, do need some assistance. They're in the middle of the desert. They only brought a little amount of water and they are badly dehydrated, something like that. And so they end up having to pull this person out of the desert because they got on the trail unprepared. But then the other thing they did was they called for assistance by posting on a Facebook group. What? I don't, I don't understand that. So that's, that's why I decided kind of impromptu. I had other things planned, but I'm, I'm this week that that's my, my topic. If you are out on the trail before you get out there, be prepared. There's that that, that slogan again. Um, <clears throat> you don't have to be a Boy Scout to think that, that it's a good idea. Be prepared. And in that case, getting help, that means knowing the local area. Who's in charge of that local area? Um, and when you get out there on the trail, check to see, do you have cell signal? Now, in the case of most day hikes, most, not all, you should have some kind of cell signal where you're at. Not always, um, but make sure people know where you're at, make sure somebody has an itinerary. All those things will help you if something goes wrong, because someone will know so-and-so was supposed to be back by this time, they're not, I'm going to call for help, okay? And if you know you have cell signal, in like I say, in this specific case, it was obvious this person had cell signal because they were using the gut hooks app and uh, they were posting on Facebook. So call 911, get the real help to you. Um, and you know, this, one of the reasons why I'm doing this kind of as a topic is because this isn't the only time I've seen it. I've seen people before come on Facebook sites talking about, oh, I'm having these really weird symptoms and, and here's what they are. And they describe six out of seven of the main symptoms of a major heart attack. And so we're telling them, call 911, you're having a heart attack. Oh, no, 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 I'll be, you know, they go into the denial thing, and which is a big thing for heart attack victims. As a first aid CPR instructor, I can tell you that's, that is a big thing, denial. Um, it, it kills a lot of people because they refuse to believe that they're in that serious uh, condition. 
but yeah, having all these symptoms instead of consulting a doctor or being worried about it and calling 911, they they post on a Facebook group to tell everybody, here's what's happening to me, you guys. You know, social media is fun. I enjoy it myself. Um, I'm, I'm on a YouTube channel for Crown Loud, so of course I like social media. But you know what? It's it's not a replacement for 911 or other calls for assistance. So again, be prepared. If you're gonna, I highly recommend you get a uh, a satellite GPS system that can that has an emergency button on it that you can call. Just press the button and it sends a signal to search and rescue in that local area so they can zero in on it and, and come help you. If you're going to be in out in the way back country um, on longer trips, I highly recommend it is worth the money to get one. When I get out there on the longer trips, um, I am planning on getting uh, one of those devices. Um, but when you are out there on the trail, double check to see now and then if you have signal, because if you do have signal, that's also a fast way to get assistance to you. Um, but don't use social media as, as your 911 call. That, that doesn't make any sense. Um, it just prolongs. I mean, this, this person that, that did this yesterday, it just prolonged help getting to him by something like an hour. Uh, people, you know, he was posting off and on no real information but just don't have much water not sure if I'm gonna make this and that's all he was saying he wouldn't give us any real details for like an hour um, and I understand that uh, again as a first aid CPR instructor um, I understand that one of the symptoms of severe heat exhaustion is confusion and that could have been part of the thing that kicked in and again one of the ways to fight that is, is even if you're confused if you have a device that I got all you have to do is press a button to get help <clears throat> um, there you go that will help in things but um, yeah so this was just just a real quick one it is you know social media is fantastic and I think it's really amazing when I can't get out on the trails um, like this summer, obviously I'm not going to be able to walk things like the PCT or the CDT and stuff. So I'm on social, social networks um, watching other people do that. And it's a lot of fun. I, I find it more entertaining than television nowadays. I watch uh, uh, several uh, PCT hikers out there. I did a whole episode on shout outs for some of the folks that I'm watching do it. I just find that more entertaining than, than most other programs and stuff that are out there for entertainment. And so. I do most of my entertainment watching in the evening. That's what I'm watching and stuff. So there's nothing wrong with that. But don't use it as a, a get help platform for Im immediate emergencies. You want advice on things? There's all kinds of fantastic groups on different social networks to get advice on gear and equipment and what are the conditions of, of the snow conditions in this area right now and all kinds of wonderful groups that you can get that kind of information. It's fantastic. But for immediate assistance, I have an emergency. No, not Facebook, not Instagram, not YouTube, not any of those. Twitter, no. If you need immediate assistance, then you get immediate assistance. If you have enough cell signal to post on a social network, then you can call 911 or some other kind of uh, number. And that's the, one of the other things I was talking about is when you're going into an area, before you even go out there, find out who is in charge of the search and rescue for that area and have their number in your cell phone. That way you can get a hold of them, okay? Be prepared. What can I say? I, I should rename this freaking channel the Be Prepared channel because it's just, it, it comes down to that in so many situations. So many things can can be okay if, if, if people just prepared for them. And I know there's a whole bunch of po folks out there that have that knee-jerk reaction right now. Hi, yo, man. Hike your own hike. Just go out there and do it. You don't need any of this prep stuff, man. Just get out. I go out there on the trail all the time. I don't. I don't pre-plan anything. I just do it, man. I just feel free. Yay! Good for you. Um, and that's fantastic, wonderful, and 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 that works until it doesn't work. Uh, the only problem is in, in things like hiking, especially hiking out in the way back country. When it doesn't work, you could be in a world of hurt. <laughs> And then you're realizing, gee, maybe I should have prepared a little bit more. Um, in fact, this person yesterday, I'm sure they just thought, 
man, I'm just going to go out there. I'm just going to do this and da 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 da. And then they get 10 miles into the trail. They're in the middle of the desert with uh, no bailout point uh, for a while because they probably don't know exactly where they're at. Um, and they have no water. And it's one of the hottest days so far of the spring. And they're out in the middle of the desert. Yeah. hi -o. Yeah, it didn't work too well for them. So, you know, like I say, that, that works great until it doesn't. And then when it doesn't, you could be in a world of hurt. So it doesn't hurt anybody to, to prepare things. Uh, no numbers, know how to get a hold of uh, emergency. And if you're going to be doing the big stuff, have a device that you can get help right away. So that's my take on it. Uh, if you guys have a different one, as always, you can get a hold of me either by leaving a comment on this video. Um, you can leave a comment on any other video I've done, no matter what the subject. It'll flag me and tell me you've left a comment. And we may talk about those comments later. Every once in a while I do a and answering the comment uh, um, video. I did one last week. <clears throat> um, and uh, uh, so thank you very much. But yeah, you can also get a hold of me at um, hikingforhealthca at gmail.com. You can get a hold of me on my Facebook page, Hiking for Health CA. Also, Hiking for Health CA Instagram. Any of those mediums, you can leave messages for me, get a hold of me. Um, to leave comments on any of the subjects I cover and as always Thank you so much to those of you who are keeping track of my crazy videos and all the, the stuff I talk about Thanks very much and um, Shout out to all of you appreciate it And that'll be it for this week. Remember when you need immediate emergency help Social media isn't the place to go for that. Don't don't do that. Thank you so much. I hope you understand. And if you agree, great. If, if, if you have some kind of respectful way to tell me why it is better to go to social media than to get immediate help 911, oh, please tell me. That would be very interesting. I, I can't think of any. I, I honestly can't. I honestly cannot think how posting to a Facebook group or to Instagram or something like that would somehow get you help faster than 911 if you have cell signal. So there you go. Let, 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 let's see what we get. Uh, otherwise, if you, if you agree, thanks a lot. I appreciate that. And uh, that's about it. We will see you next week.